Hi there, everyone. It's it's nice to see you all. Um, we were here just a, a month ago. Terry and Michael had us over and showed us the vineyard, and it's really neat to see everything that they're doing. They're pioneering the way with uh, sustainability certification here in San Diego, and we don't want them to feel lonely. So I'm here today to give you a few different techniques that you can try to keep up with them doing. So I'm from the Resource Conservation District of Greater San Diego County. We're based in Lakeside. Um, our partners, uh, Lance and Luis from um, Mission RCD are here as well. These are a set of different conservation districts across the state, and so we're here to help you. Um, and so we provide different services from planning and monitoring to actual implementation of conservation practices. Um, so just an overview of what regenerative agriculture or soil health practices are. Um, these, this, is, this is nothing new um, for uh, generations and generations, uh, farmers and ranchers have been uh, carefully taking care of the soil and the environment. Um, but um, in this time of mounting crises with uh, climate change and extreme weather, we're seeing even more value in those traditional methods that have, have been used. Um, and so in addition to just cultivating the soil health and retaining more water, they're also able to build up resilience against some of these um, changes in climate. Um, so some of the practices shown here are applying compost or using cover crops um, to make sure that your ground is never bare um, or integrating livestock with um, agricultural areas. And I'll illustrate a little bit of that as we go forward. Um, so one method that was mentioned earlier was the application of mulch. Um, and this uh, is one of the most direct ways to ensure that your soil is not bare and exposed directly to the sun. Um, and uh, we see a lot of avocado orchards, for example, that um, are unfortunately drying up um, and having to be transitioned into other crops. Um, but one technique that can be used to ensure that that soil is still retaining the moisture that it has and building the organic matter is to actually use those trees on site as mulch. And that's what's demonstrated here at our demonstration site in Escondido. Um, where the grower is um, actually mulching the trees on site and um, planting the new orchard um, in that, that covered area. And I think um, in a lot of ways, regenerative agriculture has a carbon focus where we're thinking about how to restore carbon to the soil and, and build up the soil microbes. But I think the real benefit here in San Diego is the water retention, that um, as you build up the soil health, the porosity uh, develops and you can actually take advantage of the rainfall that does come and the irrigation water that you do apply. Um, so another method that has a lot of similar benefits is planting cover crops. Again, counterintuitive, why would you use more water when we already have such limited water resources here? But um, the cover crops should pay back in the water that they use. And that's because as those plants are developing there, rather than the sun baking down on the bare soil, they're actually developing the microbial systems there and developing the root systems that means that when the water uh, that naturally falls there does come, um, it, it penetrates deeper into the soil and is available um, for irrigation uh, for the plants later on. In addition, a lot of the issues we've talked about today with uh, um, that Mark, for example, mentioned with more extreme heat events, well, cover crops um, will reduce the soil temperature so that um, in the case of an extreme heat event, you won't have as severe um, conditions and you may not have to resort to that overhead watering or perhaps it helps in concert with the overhead watering. Now there's some challenges to cover cropping. We're trying this at our demonstra uh, demonstration site as well and in San Diego we don't have the conditions of the Central Valley with cheap water and flat ground but um, we're still experimenting with it, with it because we think that perhaps with certain species especially native adapted species we may be able to take advantage of those same benefits. Um, and here's a, another example, and this is actually a picture of the vineyard where we are today. We got to go visit the High Point last time we were here, and um, I think a, a big benefit we have here is that um, a lot of the area is covered in, in thick scrub, whether planted or native scrub. Um, and one benefit that we can see from that um, perennial cover is uh, beneficial insects. So uh, Michael and Terry were talking about um, their limited need uh, for the use of pesticides. It's probably not just the weather, it's probably the way that they're managing the land as well. Um, uh, but other benefits of having perennial cover where you're not actually harvesting from this land, but it, it's protecting your cultivated area is that it controls erosion um, and can also improve water quality. So 
some of the grants that Esther is going to talk about after me include things like planting our, our riparian buffer. Well, you can get funding from the state to plant that riparian buffer because they see the direct benefit to your agricultural operation. Um, here's a weird one for you, but something that I really enjoyed. Um, this is a podcast. I don't know if any of you listen to this, Sustainable Wine Growing, based out of East Washington State. But um, one uh, episode that they brought up interviewed researchers at UC Davis who are using targeted grazing. Um, and so they actually um, take sheep through the vineyards. Um, and it's, it's not just to reduce that additional um, uh, vegetative cover, but they're actually intent on improving the soil and the water infiltration by doing that. So as the sheep move through the field, they're actually um, adding fertilization to the soil. Um, it reduces the need for herbicide use. And um, as they uh, trod the soil, they can also increase infiltration. So there's some situations where this wouldn't make sense to use it, but if you like to podcast, uh, I recommend uh, trying this one out. And there's a, a lot of interesting lessons on it. Did the sheep eat the grapevines? <laughs> 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 we tried that. I had sheep and ate all my grapevines. You tried it? Yeah. Okay. Twice Maybe it's a timing. They ate my grapevines twice. <laughs> they would nudge up the road to... Just one moment. I'll be finished in a minute. Um, so these are some of the services that the Resource Conservation District can offer you. Um, we have grants available to come take a test of your soil to see how much organic matter is currently in the soil. And then as you implement these practices, you'll be able to monitor if that organic matter increases. Um, um, Mission Resource Conservation District offers irrigation evaluations and has been doing so for a long time. And we're um, um, now offering uh, that service as well if, if they need assistance. Um, and then, oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, and then um, as you apply for grants, uh, which Esther is about to talk about, if you need assistance, um, then you can also reach out to us to figure out how to work through all those crazy calculations and fill out that paperwork. Um, and if you're trying these different practices and want some guidance, we're happy um, to come help. I, I know Lisa's here today. Lisa, I'm looking forward to checking out your flower farm next week. So thanks for inviting me. Um, and, and lastly, the main thing that the Resource Conservation do, District does is we uh, try to reduce fire risk. And so if you've seen the, the offerings for free chipping or defensible space assistance um, through SD, funded by sdg and &E, um, we're the ones who coordinate that. So if you need help um, with chipping of additional vegetation on your property, give us a call and we'll send somebody out within a few weeks. Um, so some ways to stay informed, you can join our newsletter, you can visit our website and try to send out updates every month or so. Um, and then also a new program that's coming on. Um, we're trying to look at the current state of agriculture in San Diego by getting everybody to the table to talk about um, what the current um, concerns people have are and, and how they see the, the future of agriculture in the county. And so we'll be conducting a lot of um, assessments and then actually doing listening sessions as well. And I'll invite you to, to join in, in any of that. If you're interested, it'd be great to hear what you have to say. Thanks so much. Thank you.